right. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It's The Stump. We do it every Wednesday, 3 p.m.-ish. Usually on the squishy chairs today, we got the church fold-outs because uh, we got a nice little renovation job, saving money for the nice furniture. Um, next week, we're going to have Joy Bomb coming into the, uh, into, on The Stump. Love those guys. One of the first shows I played with them both played in memphis was with them like we actually booked our own show oh, wow. which is always a nerve-wracking thing but today we got a very special guest love what you're doing you got a lot of shows coming up tomorrow love from mama honey how you doing i'm doing great thanks yeah. for having me here absolutely i love uh i love the music you're playing right now i mean you're just rocking it's just straightforward blues rock yeah and you got pipes <laughs> man you got thank pipes you. for days thank you yeah you're just belting it out yeah just you know i think that i've had a lot of pent up stuff and it's just like okay it's time to just like rah, let it out so that's just building that's your belly I'm, yeah exactly so i'm just that's where it's coming from right there in the gut in the, in the belly so a lot of people got to go to like those axe throwing rooms you get to like play write a song and play it in front of people yeah but i want to go to one of those axe throwing rooms so it sounds like fun but yeah musically that's that's what i'm channeling you know it's like i've got axe throwing in my gut. <laughs> <laughs> well it's like i i I actually, it's like one of those things that I actually have like an act, a professional, well-balanced axe in my trunk of my car. It was a gift from wow. my father when don't I was 15. Don't get bored over. Don't get bored <laughs> well, that. Well, I keep it on, it's not, I don't keep it as a weapon. I just keep it in my car just for like, you know, for giggles. Right. And if I break it out, but I learned how to throw it when I was like 15. So I'll break it out when my, my friend had a, had a target in the back of his house. And we just, I just like, oh, I actually got one. He's like, what kind of psycho are you? Wow. Running around with that, but. Cool. I didn't even know that was a thing until they opened that room. I was like, people, that's a thing? Okay. Yeah, it's kind of cool. it's kind of bred in the in, in yeah. like the redneck community, like yeah. throwing things at trees, <laughs> like where, where, yeah, where the cars don't drive. But uh, you got you have on, on Bandcamp, you got your EP out there, uh, right? Punk, yeah. uh, punk blues. Mm -hmm. And uh, how long has that been out on Bandcamp? You can go to uh, MamaHoneyMemphis.com. dot com. Right, MamaHoneyMemphis.com. dot com, and it came out. Um, we put it there like around. June or July. Okay. Like June-ish, I think. Where'd you record so, that at? Uh, we did it with uh, Alyssa Moore at Moot the Air. Oh, so yeah. We were just so excited to, to work with her, and, you know, she's just one of our favorite people on the face of the earth. So. She's all, all around badass, too. Shout out to too. Alyssa. Yeah, all around. Just, like, just amazing. So just to work with her and her energy, and she gets us, and... You know, it's just it was really great. So I think it turned out well. She'd be the last one to tell you that she's a badass too. Right? Yeah, you know? yeah. She's a a person who's not quite always in tune with her own strings, but she uses them nevertheless. Oh yeah, you know, she's amazing. So, well, how well, how long you guys been together? I know it's it's uh, Falcone. It was I uh, Frederick Falcone. Phil Phil Phil's, Falcone. I'm so Phil's Falcone. Falcone. I knew it was an alliteration. <laughs> I knew when I, when I read it, I was like, that's a badass name. It is such a, yeah, it's an awesome name. Like, and, and Phyllis is amazing to go with it. So, so there's Phyllis Falcone, and uh, she plays bass. Mm -hmm. And uh, David McNitch, who plays uh, drums. And we've been together for just a little over a year. Like, we got together, like, last summer sometime. Last summer. Okay. And, uh, yeah, just a little over a year. Were you guys playing together, or how, how did you all know each other? Because it looks like an unlikely gr grouping of people, and you all got together <laughs> and you started a band. And I, and I have a soft spot for three pieces, too. So I just yeah. got to say that right off the bat. You know, we are very, very different, but we have enough similarities between the three of us that just really unites us and pulls us together. So I met uh, David actually through Facebook because um, I was in another band called Sabella, and we had just recently, like, you know, disbanded. And so I was just, like, in this funk and just really sad and, like, I've got to quit music. I'm never doing this again. And, uh, and then I realized just, like, after watching some music, like, you know something? I want to get to the root of, you know, the heart of what I love, which is rock music. And, um, and so I put something on Facebook. And then a colleague of mine was like, how about my Uncle Davis? So... You know, through Facebook, you know, David and I were <laughs> united. So I met up with him first, and, uh, I mean, we just hit it off instantly. You know, we talked and just about music and what we love about music and the people we love, you know. Um, we talked about, like, 90s grunge music, which is our instant connection. Right on. Um, and Fair. then Phils was actually in that previous band with me. Okay. And she left before we broke up, but um, David and I, we started – making music together right away. And then uh, we had a couple people that we were trying out and they didn't work out. And then we put a video out uh, on Facebook and Phil saw it. And she's like, hey, I want in on this. So 
uh, Phil's joined us pretty quickly after that. And, uh, That's just, awesome. It's been magic, the three of us working together. And Facebook, not just dividing people, bringing people together. But bringing people together, that's right. <laughs> yeah, it's always like, nice when you, you go to like a, because I remember I did a, a Craigslist like, ad for like uh, Guitarist Wanted, and I showed up, and I was like, I lived to see it another day. Afterwards, I was like, look at the humanity go. Right, yeah. Showing up, yeah, that's it's awesome. It's scary putting yourself out there, because you never know what you're going to get from that stuff. But <laughs> You don't, you don't. You just got to put your Find My oh iPhone my app on and make yeah, sure they like, can, <laughs> make sure they can track you. Tell everybody where you are. Look, <laughs> this is what I'm doing. Absolutely. I'm this person. <laughs> and for a year, a year together, you guys are playing some six shows. Um, you're, I mean, this this weekend alone, I was looking at it. You're playing Cooper Young Festival, the main stage. I think at one o'clock. Right. Yeah, one o'clock. One o'clock. You're on the main stage, right in front of uh, Young Adam Deli, which is a hard. Like, I always felt like that was a hard gig to get. So it was like it's like really cool. You get like it's gonna be like a what, like a hundred thousand people down there. Yeah. Going in no and out. pressure whatsoever. No, none, <laughs> it is gonna none. be fun. You, you, you just, I don't know. Like. I close my eyes when I'm playing most of the time anyway, so you just put sunglasses on and no one can see you. Right. Well, you know, we're just going to, we always say, we're just going to do what we do. We're going to be Mama Honey and we're just going to, we're just going to do what we do and, and uh, hopefully, you know, people will enjoy it, which I, I think some people will, you know, well, <laughs> at least the people we invited, you know, the ones we know. As long as but, you know you got one person on your side, exactly. I always find that, like, just play for that one person. Mm -hmm. You don't find the guy with his, his arms crossed sitting over there just kind of sitting there judging. Yeah. You find that one person bobbing their head and they're like, all right, cool. Right. And you just go with that. Yeah. yeah exactly. So what does Mama Honey mean to you? Like, where would the name come from? Where did the... <laughs> Well, so uh, the name actually comes from my my child Phoenix. That's okay. her name, and she's the, the the kid that's on the cover of the CD. Okay. And uh, so, you know, when she was a little younger, around I don't know, whenever we were coming up with the band, or I was coming up with the band, um, she used to call me Mama Honey, and that name came about because. Um, I have a partner, and there's two moms, uh -huh. and so my hun my wife calls me Honey all the time. So Phoenix thought that that was my name, so she called she started calling me Honey, Honey, Honey. Yeah. And so to distinguish between the two of us, you know, she, my wife Edie's Mama Dada, and I'm Mama Honey. So okay. She doesn't call me that anymore, which is kind of sad, but but the name like it just felt right. Like I kind of thought about other names, and just one day it just clicked. Like that's the name of the band. And, of course, it's like a much bigger meaning than that because it's not just about me. It's about so much more than, you know, my kid calling me Mama Honey. I feel like it's about strength. It's about, you know, um, power and, and and the female energy that we all have in us and the, the honey that comes from the woman and the sex and the drive and all of those things Yeah. together. So that's what Mama Honey is. And we're love. You know, we're all about love and sharing, you know. The, the love of music and the love of, of who we are and, and, and hopefully bringing people together through music. I mean, it's definitely about love, but you, when, you're singing up, when you're singing on stage, I mean, there's definitely something out there, something in there that's like a, like you said, like power, but it is, I mean, I don't know where it's coming from, but I, like, I just always love, I love when, when someone's up there and just like kind of owns their space and yeah. you're sitting there belting it out. And then you'll go into a solo, and you'll jam that out, and you'll go back into it. Like, it's like riff rock, man. It's yeah. really, it's really <laughs> yeah. cool stuff. Yeah. And you're getting it. Thank you. Well, I am just enjoying the whole process of writing and, and coming up with stuff and, you know, working with David and Phils and getting some cool shows now. So that's really awesome. We're going to be at the Halloran also on Sunday. Yeah, the, uh, the uh, concert for non, a nonviolent non Memphis. Memphis. Yeah, and that was put together by our really amazing friend, um, Paul Crum, who's just a champion for, for Memphis musicians and Memphis music and, and obviously a champion for, you know, ending nonviolence and poverty in our city. So we're so just you know, privileged to have that as well, to be playing with, like, some of Memphis's, like, yeah, greatest it's Keith Sykes, names. John Paul Keith, Reba exactly. Russell, they're like, all like yeah, they're all on it. Ooh, yeah. Is that, that I get goosebumps thinking about that. I'm about to say yeah. a little intimidating. <laughs> Just a little bit, you know, because we're like you know the the new kids on the block. Yeah. You know, and they're very established, but. You know, just I just feel lucky to be there. You know, I feel lucky to be in the room with them and to hopefully, you know, learn a thing or two and to to feel that that presence and to maybe even you know get to know a few of them on a personal level. Do you, you know? feel like you're on a learning curve right now? 
Um, definitely. I feel like I feel like I'm always on a learning curve. <laughs> like I don't know if I'm ever gonna feel like I've made it, you know, to where I, I'm like, okay, I don't. There's nothing else for me to know. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I feel like I'm always learning from people, and I'm just always open to learning from whoever, whomever has something that they want to, you know, teach me or show me. Then yeah, come on, let let me help me be better at what I'm doing. Yeah, it's it's a tough thing not being intimidated by someone else's experience sometimes like just watching them and how they move and you kind of just sit and i'll sit there and i'll take mental notes and i'm like mm -hmm. man they own the pocket they're there but then like you can't fake experience either so you can't fake like 10 15 years of doing someone's been doing something because no one posts like when they're breaking the plates they show when they're balancing them right and throwing them up so they're kind of like you kind of just watch them and you watch someone else that you admire and then get anything you can from them and like i guess whether it's big little i always find it's like kind of a small thing that they do and like oh they, they just tap their pedal or they just kind of like or they, they kind of step aside move back from the mic or something watch how they gracefully mm -hmm. interact with people don't give them too much too little right like just little like the little things i usually find that kind of like helps and it helps move the process forward Right, like whenever I'm watching anyone or even listening to music, I'm always learning things. And so like you were saying, you just, you know, you watch what they're doing. I'm looking at their hands. I'm looking at how are they doing that and what are they doing there. And, you know, so for me it's a learning process. But as far as being intimidated is concerned, and yeah, it's so easy to get into that space where you're feeling intimidated. But I'm also at a space in my life where I'm just like learning to let go of like, because that, that's a negative you know, feeling that's coming from a space of fear. Yeah. So I'm learning to just like push that fear aside because the only person I can be is Tamar mm -hmm. when I'm on the stage. And of course, yes, I can learn from other people and get better at what I'm doing. But at the same time, I have to, um, you know, just kind of let go and just let the moment be in the moment. Yeah. You know? Well, it's that fear that's kind of like false evidence, false evidence appearing real. Right. Oh yeah. I love yeah. I love all those acronyms and stuff like that. Like mm -hmm. I just don't share the memes, but like that like I always found that to, like that that fear that I have of being intimidated or being around people that I mean true they earn the right to be wherever they're at and they earn their sound. Mm -hmm. But it didn't come easy for them. It won't come easy for me. It won't come right. easy for you. Yeah. But it'll come if you keep working at it. Exactly. You know, the one thing that I keep telling myself is there's a seat at the table for everybody who wants to be there. You yeah. Know? I think there's room for everyone. So, you know, they are where they are, and that's great, and they've gotten there, and that was their time. And then my time, you know, is going to be on, not on their clock, but on my clock. Yeah. You know, so whenever that's, whenever that happens, whenever that's going to be, or whatever that is, you know, it's the right, perfect moment for me for when I'm ready, you know. Yeah. So not comparing yourself to other people. Um, which is hard to do. <laughs> it's impossible. It's really hard to do. Especially comparing like your insides to someone else's outsides. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's where, like a, it's not like always the, like the reason for like clinical depression. But like, I always say like I'm like well if you if if you're doing everything you can for yourself, then and you're you're doing like the action, it'll everything else will catch up. Like will like take your ass and your head will follow. <laughs> kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. So like I, I always get frustrated when I watch people struggle with that because I experienced that frustration myself. So I'm like, all right, yeah, just take it easy. Don't be so hard on yourself. You move one step forward. And, I mean, you you have a five-song EP right now. What, mm -hmm. Like what kind of writing are you guys doing, you know, going forward? Like, like you have plans? You, are you jamming stuff out on stage that you haven't even recorded yet? Actually, so we have our five-song EP, and then, like, we're doing, I think, ten songs. So, five of those songs are not recorded yet. Yeah. So, um, five of them are from the EP. In, fa in fact, I don't think we're doing one of the songs from the EP. So maybe six of those songs are songs that have not even been recorded yet. And then we have a, a song that's brand new to us. That's only like a few weeks old, but we're gonna be brave. I feel like we're ready to play it. That's you know, the best. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So uh, we're gonna do a, a brand new spanking unheard song um on the stage as well so that's that's gonna be fun yeah know? um so yeah we've got like a few songs three that we've been working on the past few weeks and then we've got like a few songs that we haven't gotten to yet yeah but you know time will happen and we will get those songs learned so my my goal this summer was to have like a, a batch of songs that we can start working on so yeah you know 
we've got a batch of songs that we've started working on. I love, I love, I love when if it's like a week or two, and it hasn't been like road tested properly like yet, and you're just <laughs> going out there and you're like, well, screw it, we'll we'll see what happens, we'll get a feel for it because I don't, I don't like the best time to record is after you've played it a bunch in front of a crowd, right? Yeah, and then you, you kind of like find find new gaps in it, and you're like, oh, we could fill that there, we could do that there, mm-hmm. but like when you're just it's ambitious. I like how you're going to go like towards one of the largest <laughs> yeah. audiences you've had. You're going to be like, screw it. We're yeah, going to throw good. one out there. Yeah. That's brave. Yeah. yeah. I love that. That pumps me up. Yeah, we're pumped up too. I mean, we talked about it. We were going to do like an, another, we were just going to keep it all the songs we know about. But that song, we just kept feeling it. You know, mm-hmm. we, we just, I don't know, something about that song, you know. We were like, you know, just let's just do it. We're ready. Let's do it. So, What's the name of the song? It's called You Can't Hurt Me. Okay. And uh, It's kind of fitting. Yeah. Considering you <laughs> going out there with it. <laughs> right, yeah. So we'll just play it, and it'll be fun, and uh, we'll just kind of see what happens with it. But, you know, as far as our – we're ready to do it, so it's just going to be fun. But like you, yeah. All right, so you're doing, like, riff rock. I mean, you got – I mean, it's almost like a – it's not like a toned – like, it reminded me of, like, Clutch uh, in a way. Yeah. And I was wondering what kind of – like, you told me that you guys were bonding over uh, – over uh, 90s grunge, what was the band? Uh, particularly Soundgarden was the band All that right. David and I, like really Soundgarden and uh, of course Nirvana. You know, I think that we were just like so much in love with grunge, you know, music. That was that was my heart and my soul, like in the 90s. You know, I loved that so much. Um, but I love Chris Cornell's voice. It's just amazing. It's rock, but it's also, he's got some soul to it. And, uh, you know, they're just the masters of, like, <laughs> amazing riffs. You know? Yeah. and then, So that was kind of, that was the band that we kind of, you know, bonded over. It's like Soundgarden, Soundgarden, yeah. Do you remember yeah. the song that, that, that was like, what is this? Um, you know, the first song that I heard from, actually, when I was a kid, back when we were, had cassette tapes, um, when I was still living in Mississippi, we had, um, I had the, um, the, not the first album. It was, um, oh my God, what's the name of it? It's the one with the spiral. Oh, um, the, oh, no, now I'm, I feel like I'm on. Right, that one. You know yeah, what I'm talking I know about, exactly though. What talking about. Bad I don't know why. Bad Motorfinger. Bad Motorfinger. Yeah, Bad Motorfinger. And that album just blew me away. I remember listening to it like every single day and just like pretty much knowing all of the songs. And, and, um, Rusty Cage, Jesus Rusty Christ Cage. Pose. Jesus Christ Pose is like. That's amazing that's song. the one. That's what the riff I heard, and I was like, I don't know if this is music, but I don't. <laughs> it was because like it was. I just never heard. Yeah. I, when I was young, that I'd never heard anybody do that. Just like yeah. you know, I was just like, like you what could. Because like half the time, I always like it's always funny because I'm always trying to mimic somebody else that I've heard, but like. I don't know, like, who are they trying to mimic? Because a lot of times we hear something like, I've never heard that before. I don't know if anybody, that feels like an original thought. Mm-hmm. And they put it and they put it down to paper, and they put it down to note, and they figured out how to make it work. And I always find that amazing. Right, yeah. Just, like, sounds that you would not have, like, thought to put, or notes that you wouldn't have thought to put together because they really hadn't been done before, and you just, yeah. kind of, like, do it. You know, so... Yeah, I I love that album. That's probably my favorite album by them. It's not and, bad. Uh, uh, it's not a bad album to have as a favorite, especially right. when, especially in your impressionable years. Exactly, exactly. Mm. And so I've always kind of gravitated towards music that was a little bit outside of the box. You know, especially uh, I mean, I've I've just been around music my whole life. So, you know, with the classical music I grew up with, and and you know, learning how to play guitar. You know, I've always just kind of gravitated towards things that are a little bit. Outside Did you grow of up with your parents, musicians? You grew up in. No, actually, um, I was on a field trip with some kids at school, and I saw the the symphony, and I wanted to play the cello, and so. Nice. You know, eventually my mom caved and said, "Okay, you play the cello." So that was um, my introduction to learning how to play music. So um, I've been doing that for quite some time. Cello. Uh, yeah, I still play the cello. That's awesome. <laughs> that's what I do. Uh, that was actually, the, you know, that's what I went to school for, so cello playing. And really? So, um, yep, yep, cello, orchestra, and all that stuff. So, University yeah, of Memphis? Yeah, I'm, I'm very, very much influenced by, like, just all kinds of music. So I love symphonic music. I love rock music. I, I love, you know, 
just everything. And so I feel like I've been influenced by pretty much anything and everything that I've ever heard, you know. And I've learned to be a student um, of just all kinds of music. And when I, whenever I listen to music, you know, I've always got my, I don't listen passively. You know, I'm always listening because to learn something. Yeah. It's not just, oh, this sounds really good, but I'm also listening to how did they do that? How did they record that? How does, you know, how does this all fit together? And that's really, really interesting. So I just love everything about, about all, all kinds of music. Now all yeah. I can think of is if you just incorporate a cello into some of your songs. You know, I think that I will probably eventually do that. I had to kind of take a step back yeah. for a little bit. Um, you know, I was just like, I don't know, just in this place where I was just practicing all the time and in grad school, and then I just got a little burnt out, you mm -hmm. know. And, so, and I never fully, like, took a step back. And just said, you know, I'm just going to like, and I've got a cello gig like tomorrow. <laughs> so I'm not really ever taking a step back. <laughs> but I feel like I know what but you mean. Yeah. I just needed to not let that be my primary thing for a while. Yeah. You know? And I definitely feel like there's some things brewing in my head that are going to have to come out on cello in the near future. Yeah. So that's, well, like yeah. I imagine it becomes part of your identity at a certain point. You're like, all right, I'm a little more than that. Let me kind of branch out and see what else I can throw in here, and then, because the, then you'll have just just different ba uh, sounds bouncing around your head, and it'll kind of like you'll compare and contrast. Right. So imagine you're trying to play something on there uh, on the guitar, and you're like, all right, but I bet it'll sound better on the cello. Exactly. On the cello, back and forth. I don't, it reminds me of Murder by Death. Oh the yeah, band, yeah, Is yeah. the band that comes to mind? Because I saw mm -hmm. them by accident one time, and the girl was on the cello. It is the cello right? Mm -hmm. And she's just and just the layer that it added. I was like. Damn, this is some good music. Right, yeah. And there's so much, you know, that people are doing with string instruments these days that weren't happening so long ago. So, you know, it's really fascinating to see fascinating to see how, you know, there's just all this development and you know, people are finding all kinds of ways to use all kinds of <coughs> instruments, you know, the banjo and yeah. all kinds of things. So but yeah, definitely, you know, the cello's coming eventually. You know, in time, like, in time. In time. So it's kind of like there's it's brewing in the back of my head, you know. And, and so it was the cello guitar. Cello guitar. And now here we are right now. That's pretty cool. Yeah. But it started with a string. Mm-hmm. All right. On a field trip. Who was the uh, symphony? It was the Jackson Symphony in Mississippi. Okay. So, Yeah. What was any? Was it like a special kind of thing? There was like a Beethoven. You know, I opening. think they were doing Peter and the Wolf. You know, really? Just like this symphony that has this child story that goes along with it, and I was just like mesmerized by the cello section. You know, I just love that those deeper sounds. You know, and I like that it goes low, but it goes high too. It's just you know, it's just the most beautiful instrument to not only listen to but to yeah. to watch. You know, it's just like just beautiful. I was gonna say because cello is a dark instrument. And Soundgarden is dark, a dark band. I like dark. I'm about to say like you dark. like it. You like you like the dark side of life, I huh? Do. I do. I, I live on the dark side. <laughs> like, yeah, the, well, I'm about to say the 15 minutes before you go to sleep. Is it like because I have trouble sleeping? I I'll, t I'll take melatonin, drink some sleepy tea. Otherwise, my mind won't stop. It's it's like like that's a tough time. Like, that's maybe the toughest part of the day for me. Mm -hmm. Is like the easing into sleep. But I find that I'm a dark person, so my mind will wander. The six million different memories, you know, before, like, before, is that kind of, are you, like, the kind of wired that? Is it always, the machine always running? Pretty much, yeah. Like, for me, it's not falling asleep. It's more that I wake up and I can't go back to sleep. And so mm. there's all this, you know, I'm hoping that I will go back to sleep. And then there's all this chatter and stuff, you know, and it's usually not <laughs> stuff I want to be thinking about. I hear you. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can keep a journal but next to my bed, and I have my phone. That's where I usually take my notes. And then I have the time I wake up in the middle of the night and just like, Ugh, and I'll eat a bowl of cereal, Ugh. and I'll go back. And then I'll, and I don't know why food just puts me right back out. I should try that. Oh my that god, might work for food me. is the best. <laughs> food is the like the greatest thing. Eat some carbohydrates and then just pass right back out. Oh, it's amazing. I'll, I'll remember that tonight. I would say it's I would say it's foolproof, but it's not all the time. Right. Somet <laughs> yeah, sometimes you just kind of like, I'm. I'm smoke a cigarette sorry mom and i'll i'll burn my burn it right back out and go yeah. to bed what i mean it's funny because you guys have been together for, for a year and you're doing so well right now i was thinking i was just like what 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 kind of goals do you have 
for this year compared to that? I think you said you want to record some more songs. Um, yeah, we want to record some more songs. Um, we want to get outside of Memphis. We love Memphis, and we, like, praise Memphis every chance we get. But, you know, we also want to venture out mm -hmm. and see what the world has to offer. Yeah. So um, that's something that we want to look forward to. And, uh, you know, I feel like we're at the place where we might start thinking about like maybe having someone manage us and kind of help us and to do some some business type stuff because we're all musicians and we kind of suck at the, <laughs> at the business side of things as most creatives uh, are yeah so um that's just kind of stuff that we're thinking about so we want to get outside of memphis a bit and then, you know of course continue to play here because i feel like there are lots of places and things that we haven't done yet you know like we haven't you know, um, explored all the things that we can possibly do. And, and we just love being here. All of us are Memphians, and, uh, you know, we just we love our city. So yeah. we're always going to gonna be here. But, you know, babies have to fly. Baby birds have to oh, get absolutely. out of the nest. So if only, yeah, if only thing just for, just for the experience. Because exactly. It, I think yeah. that's like the nice road test to see what – that and from what I understand and what I've experienced is if you're from Memphis – it's pretty easy to get a gig in another city. They're like, oh, you're from Memphis? Let's see what you got. And then you come up and you just try to blow the doors off as best you can. Right. So we're just going to get ourselves out there. Hopefully um, by the end of the year we'll have some things lined up nice. outside of the city and just kind of like explode. Exactly. If you had to play, sound. what city would you want to go to and conquer? Wow. Um, I would love to go to New Orleans because my dad is from was, was from New Orleans. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I just love the music scene and the the music from that place, and it's just so amazing. So New Orleans, and you know, I think we and everybody in our in the world, you know, has their eye on Austin, Texas, because you know they're just a huge city for for um, burgeoning uh, bands. Yeah, is that the right word, burgeoning? Yeah, whatever. I I never say that word with confidence. Yeah, I, told, <laughs> I, I didn't guess, either. <laughs> <laughs> Even when I'm reading by myself, I'll have to say it out loud. Like, uh, yeah. Right now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Austin, Texas, and uh, just wherever. You know, I've heard really good things about North Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, just and I would I would love to go to cities where you wouldn't expect there to be a really cool music scene, but there is. Yeah. You know. So. Tulsa, Oklahoma. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is it's actually good. I, I did a comedy show there one time. It was a really good gig. That was a really cool city. It's it's kind of like it kind of looks like Memphis in regard that. It was kind of small, but it's building out, and there's murals everywhere, and it's kind of just like growing out. Best bratwurst I've ever had in my entire life was in Tulsa, Oklahoma, of all places. Cool. I'm a vegetarian, so. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, they, maybe they got a tofu one. All right. Is it, uh, they do have tofu bratwurst. I don't think they do. Do they? Yeah, they, they do. You can find them at Kroger, actually. <laughs> What's the skin made out of? Uh, I don't think there is skin, which is kind of... <laughs> <laughs> so it basically is just very it's phallic. Just like, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. There's I learned no something new today. <laughs> Tofu bratwurst. Yep. I know the bean, bur uh, apparently the bean burger at Huey's is pretty good. Oh, oh yeah, it's amazing. Our bass player is a it. vegetarian. So, I, like, and uh, every time he tells me, I'm always surprised by it. Like, I'm just discovering. Like, my dad always discovers my tattoos every time he sees <laughs> He's like, when'd you get that? I'm like, I've had it for like 10 years. I've told you 10 times. Yeah. He hates them. Mom hates them more, though. <laughs> he can't. Well, they're not coming off, so. No. They, well, some of them don't translate as well. Like, I got them. Like, the, only one, the only one I don't like, and it's the one I got when I was 18. And it was a tribal eagle. Cause I, I don't think anybody likes the tattoo they got when they were 18. <laughs> you should. Honestly, you should. It's like if you're the same person you're 18 when you're 28, when you're 38. <laughs> Something's wrong, right? So, you, like, but some of them, ha I, I'm gonna have to explain to my grand, my grandkids, because they're gonna be like, "What does that one mean?" You're like, Ooh, this was the existential crisis of 2007. <laughs> Sit down on my lap and let me tell you about it. <laughs> <laughs> you got any tattoos? Yeah, I do. I have, um, I have a, a couple trees because first, I love the image of the tree and mm. and just the the roots and the growth and the spirituality that goes along with that. And I have a a couple of phoenixes before I even knew that I was going to name my kid Phoenix. Right on. Um, I have a phoenix on my arm. I have a phoenix on my back. And um, let's see, what else do I have? And, you know, like 
flowers and stuff like that. So I like sort of nature type stuff. Yeah. That's what I like. Do you hike? You get out in there every once in a while? Um, I don't go out. <laughs> I like nature, but I don't go in nature. <laughs> no, that's not true. I want to make sure it's there when I want to go. <laughs> right. As, you know, um, I, I used to do more. Um, like, I go running out in my neighborhood, you mm-hmm. know, um, and we used to go hiking and stuff like that more when I was, before I had a kid, but, like, when you have a kid, it's just, everything is harder. So, yeah. I think, like, she's getting old enough, she's four now, mm-hmm. to where things are starting to be less hard. Yeah. Um, because we used to go camping and stuff like that all the time, and then I'm just like, no, I'm not taking a kid. You just think about everything no, that you have. Everything the, that the you have to do. The laundry list of things. It's so much work. <laughs> so much work. And so uh, now she's getting old enough to where things will be less hard, uh-huh. so that you know maybe we can actually I can actually ex- explore doing those things again. And also I'm like reclaiming my time because like when you become a mom and you're the, you know you're the mom that they want all the time. Like yes, there's two moms, but I'm the mom you know it's like all of your time gets absorbed by this kid you know and it's really hard to do anything else for yourself so you know i'm doing things for myself again like reclaiming my my me space yeah you know which they do that as a like like my sister told me she's like when you have kids don't forget when their life begins your life ends I was it does. like I was like oh for wow. a while it does yeah. and then you kind of slowly have to remember oh yeah I used to do stuff yeah <laughs> <laughs> I was cool I was actually a person before I became a mom or a dad or whatever and you had like other things and interests um, yeah. you know that you have to rediscover <laughs> was that with like a part like like was it a year ago when you started like when you before mama honey that you were like able like, oh I got like it's putting its pants on now like it, it, I can I, know, like I feel like it started like this summer. Like now she's three. Like she can kind of dress herself and stuff. But at, you know, at the same time, it's like they still need you for so many things. So mm-hmm. they're learning how to do things, and they need you for a lot. And so now she, you know, I can leave her more with, you know, just not have to have her around. Yeah. And it's not that I didn't want it. I, I want it to be around. It's like when you're a parent and you have this kid, you actually want to be around your kid more. Yeah. So you're making a choice as well as there's just all this work require, required that you are going to, you know, be there for your kid, you know. And you just, you have to, like I had to consciously tell myself, okay, well, I'm going to have to, let a lot of stuff go because this is where I need to be. And then yeah. you have to be just okay with that. And then you slowly get those things back. Gotcha. So, yeah. Is that is that kind of source material for a lot of songs that you're writing? <laughs> Having lost my... <laughs> <laughs> lost my identity, my lost identity my time. For a, for a while. I don't think I've actually written any songs about, about, uh, about that, but I don't know. Maybe I should. There's, I should. there's something there. There's always some, any, there's something there. Yeah. Any time of internal personal struggle. You know, that's kind of because our a lot of our, our our music will be like about the internal struggle about like with spirituality and how like at least for me, mm-hmm. you know, when it comes to especially like when it comes to like religion or there's some our personal beliefs and stuff like that, and I kind of mirror that just based on what it is in society. I don't have a kid, but I'm sure there's going to be a host of it when it comes, and it's going to flow and it's going to hit hard, and I'll have to. Good, bad, and different. Write it all down. Right. And hopefully they don't read it later on. And when they do read it, <laughs> they'll be old enough to understand. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's like the, the difference between being an adult and being a kid and having a little experience on your belt and realizing the gray in life. Yeah. Like um, I teach uh, at a high school. I teach music. Okay. And uh, I was kind of telling them that. You know, life gets so much easier and it's so much better as you get older. So I almost found myself saying, man, I'm, you know, because they were like, Miss Love, I thought you were 20. I'm like, oh, girl, I ain't 20. <laughs> you just got an A. <laughs> mm, mm, I love you, boo. Um, but, <laughs> but anyway, but I was like, man, I wish I was 20. He was like, no, wait a second. No, I don't. Because, like, I've got so much more wisdom now. Yeah. And I'm still young. I look good. I feel good. Mm. And But, like, as you get older, you know, you've got more tools in your belt to handle because like when you're younger in your early 20s and you know you're falling apart when things happen like oh my yeah. god ah, you know and so now things happen it's kind of like well you know you just learn how to to glide more through life without 
letting the world around you fall apart. So, yeah. you know, I like getting a little older. Yeah, oh, I love it. Yeah. Everybody doesn't have I to be your friend when you get older. Man, that too. That constant crisis of of conversation and 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 <laughs> figuring out what well, if they're not if they're not around well, they don't like me blah 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 blah. So like it's easy, like I, I forgot what I was talking about the other day, but they're just like, man, I'm so glad that I don't have to make friends anymore. Like I'm at that age, you just you just kind of attract the people. Right, the right people you, come, and, and, and they cool. right people, and the right people, and the wrong people leave. And then they leave. go. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just easy to kind of like you know water off a duck's back, kind of mm-hmm. just like all right, cool. And I, I feel like that makes it a little bit easier as it goes on too, because you're not carrying someone else's baggage. Right, you're not carrying their baggage, and you're not worried about you know what people think anymore. Mm-hmm. Like you are when you're younger, because you're trying to to please people, and you want people to like you, and you're you know doing stuff to to get you know people to to like you more so you just you become more settled in who you are and yeah. you just like, accept you know you know I'm, I'm okay with myself and i'm gonna allow myself to be who i am and, and just be fine with it so took a lot of practice oh heck yeah <laughs> that's the one thing i try to tell so like, much practice it's it's hard like there's no like you can't fake experience you know right. i mean you guys are gonna be, like as a band you guys are gonna come up like like i call it the terrible twos <laughs> you know, like it's just like a ki- like a kid because I I lo- always look at the band like a marriage or like mm-hmm. in a relationship, and kind of just that's when, especially when you're going to record, and that's usually when the the biggest compromises come and kind of really learn how each other communicate. Yeah, it's, it's trial by fire. You know, and I think that the three of us, you know, we have so much respect for each other, mm. and then I feel that we have kind of grown in our own personal lives, our own personal ways that we've learned how. Like, communication is an art form. Yeah. And y'all don't always get it right because I'm usually kind of straightforward when I say stuff and I have to catch myself and just make sure that I'm not, like, you know, being overly brutal. And it's not that any of us are, but I think that we've just learned how to communicate more mm-hmm. um, in, a, in a way that the other person can hear it. You know, like, yeah. you know, David will... You know, because I'm always open to suggestions from Phil's and, David's and, and David, and we have to be... For each other, you know, and you know, and every now and then David will have something to say, but he knows how to, you know, Tamar. I was just thinking about this, and and uh, you know, I'm just an old drummer, but he'll say <laughs> that I'm just a drummer, but you know, this is what I think, and I'm like, dude, that's that's cool. I love that you have something to say, you know, and and Phil's always comes in with opinions. So I think that you also have to just have an openness to hearing what someone else has. To be willing to try it so if someone comes in and say you know i was thinking about this song let's try this like okay we'll try it and just see what we think about it and if it doesn't work then uh, that's fine it doesn't work and we all just kind of move on but at the same time i also like you said you have to also be willing to make some compromises here and there Mm -hmm. about things so that you know like if this person is feeling really impassioned passionate about something and i'm just kind of like well, my opinion is different, but I can see that you're really passionate about yeah. this. Well, let's just go with that because in the long run, if you're thinking about longevity, that's what you want. Your goal is to be together for as long as you want to be together yeah. and not break up because of some, you know. Dis- so, it, some trivial dis- thing yeah, that, yeah. that could have been avoided exactly. at, at some point. But, like, but it's recognizing the passion in somebody else's eyes. Mm-hmm. Like the, Obviously, this is something they really, really want to do. So, I mean, I, I, I think that's, like, something, like, Metallica never let Kurt Hammett do. You know, like... <laughs> like oh, poor Kurt, yeah. I, it's always poor, poor Kurt, because I don't think he has any... Like, you ever see some kind of monster? Yeah, it, I have. I have he yeah. actually even says in, like, the therapy session, he's like, not that I ever had any <laughs> input yeah. in anything, if you guys want to know. And then, right, yeah, because it's always been, like, uh, Lars and Lars and, and, and James. And James, right? every Doing single everything. time. Yeah. So like, yeah, I always felt, yeah, I always felt really, really bad for Kurt because I'm like, I, he might be the most talented guy in the room, right? Like musically, <laughs> but I, I don't, like, I don't think he's doing anything. I think that's why he goes so dark and deep in his horror films. <laughs> <laughs> he's just putting like targets on, on dartboards all over the place. Yeah. But I love that. Uh, yeah, learning to communicate with band members is a, is is a class they don't teach. But it's certainly a valuable thing in the community right. to be able to do that. For sure. And it's just all about, like, letting go of whatever ego you might 
path. Oh, ego's you know, the number everyone, one killer right there. Yeah, exactly. So everyone everyone thinks that they're so special and that they're, you know, they're the, the magic that makes everything happen. But, you know, I, I don't think that I'm that special. Like, you know, I'll, I'll bring a song in and uh, it almost never is what I imagined it was going to be, mm-hmm. you know. And that's why I love letting or, you know, I don't say letting, but I love that Phils and David, we all have equal creativity in shaping the songs and yeah. making them go in a direction that feels good for us as a group, not just because, you know, I'm not dictating anything to anybody. Yeah. So, you know. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. And, and it just makes three, it better. And you're a three-piece, so any any, uh, any kind of, like, if there's any weirdness or anything like that or, or uncomfortability, you're going to notice that real fast. Right, you can't yeah. hide. You can't hide behind, you know, like a synth. <laughs> You know, <laughs> like it's gonna be noticeable, so everybody's on the same page. Right. That's why, like, I never have, like, I don't ever want to have a serious conversation before we go on stage. Oh you know, like, no, no, That's you know, like, it's, it's like having a serious conversation <laughs> before you go to sleep. Yeah, it's, it's a bad idea. Right, or right before you leave the house, somebody brings something up, and it's like, why are you now? Let's do, do that. Can we table this? Yeah, we table like, this, this is the not show? the right time to have this conversation. Let's, yeah. You have a so, pre-show ritual. Uh, so far, no. So far, no. I think, you know, we all kind of go into our, our places. So, you know, David goes and he has his cigarette and, you know, Phil's and I, we kind of have our little alone time. But we don't have like a put our hands together thing yeah. in a circle and, yeah, let's go. A chili pepper moment. We were all like yeah, coupled away. All yeah, hugging and stuff. I want to have one. <laughs> it's, it's cool. It's really cool. <laughs> but I feel like it has to be like something that happens naturally. And it's yeah. Like, oh, let's do that every time. It's a nickname. You know. It's like a. It's like a nickname. You yeah. don't just give yourself a nickname. Right. You're like that. It just happened. Like, oh my God, I love paydays, and you all have right. like a payday or something like that before. When we do a, we do like a hand thing. We put your hands together. We're like, Bow. Yeah. We have a certain thing we say, but so yeah, I was actually thinking about that before. Like, well, it'd be really cool if we had like a thing that we did that kind of unites us right before we go on stage, mm-hmm. you know. But organically, for me, it's, if it's meant to happen, it'll it'll, it'll happen. happen. For me, it's a PBR and a shot of tequila. All right, that's on. that's my that's my pre-show warm up, <laughs> which awesome. I, which I can't like a post forty. Whatever gets you there. <laughs> well, I mean, it's not it's not like it's. It's still kind of, I still get nervous going up every time. Yeah. It never doesn't happen. I'm the same way. Yeah. I get nervous every, I mean, I've been performing my whole life in different, you know, iterations of groups and things, and I never not get nervous. But you know what I think about? I think about um, this guy, his name is Pablo Casals, and he's like the greatest cello player that's ever lived on the face of the earth. He's dead. But anyway, um... (laughs) But even though he was like, played for kings and queens and just the best, you know, could do no wrong, he felt nervous every single time. Yeah. You know, because I've heard so many people say, I never get nervous, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, You're a psycho. Wow. Okay. That's great. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not you. <laughs> and I get nervous. And I think about, you know, um, I don't know. I just try to, try to, I think about him and how he just, you know, that was something that he just always did. But you just have to, I'm just learning how to just let go and relax and just be in the moment and just, you know, I tell myself, I'm prepared. I'm ready. Yeah. I've practiced, you know. Yeah. And I just have to trust myself that my hands know what to do. My voice knows what to do. Everything's going to be fine. So if I just kind of think about positive out- outcomes and not focus on, you know things that might go wrong. Yeah. You know, because when if you think about stuff that's gonna go wrong, it'll go gonna wrong. It's gonna go wrong. That was yeah. That so. was the one thing we were talking with Victor Sawyer. He came in and he was talking about. Yeah, he, uh, he plays trombone and he says like one of his favorite things to do is just to pl- just he'll just practice and practice and practice and practice and until it's so cemented and ingrained in his head, he just shows up and he's like, I got no worries. Yeah. Like it's muscle memory. It go it goes from there. And like the, if the importance of the gig. I mean, I, I I don't know if it kind of registers, but he'll play with big national acts, and he's like, what do I have to worry about? I've done the homework. I'm yeah. ready to go. And that's him getting in his place, just letting go mm-hmm. of you know the fear that's 
possibly saying, you know, this is going to go wrong and blah, blah, blah. Well, he let go of that fear. Well, first of all, you have to be ready. You yeah. Just like, <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, so being ready is key. And also just, you know, allowing yourself to, you know, allowing the part of you that knows that you are ready to be in the one that's leading the way. And not, yeah. And not the other self that's all, you know. Yeah, eliminate what you can eliminate. Right. And then the rest of it will take. And know. that'll be fine. Yeah. You know, and you know, I find that like a lot of times, even if I do like blip something, like just keep going. Nobody's going to, don't let that moment define everything else, you know, yeah. like, and just not worry about it. Just keep going and no one's going to remember, you know, some tiny little thing that you're probably going to remember forever. But yeah. like there are times when I've listened back to recordings that, I've made or were made, and I thought, oh my God, I messed up, and I was just horrified to go back and listen to it. And then I listened, and I was like, it wasn't anywhere near what I was thinking. Yeah. You know, like, oh, I actually did really well, and there was a tiny blip, but like, if you weren't really paying attention, you probably wouldn't have noticed, because like, you know, but we get inside our heads, and we are just our worst critics, and we just beat ourselves up over the smallest little things, and yeah. you just let all that go. I always love it when, like, I, 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 ne- I, I never want anyone if because if they if they're pursuing something they want they love to, they love to do and and they want to do I, 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 I always say I hope you screw up big early. Mm-hmm. That way you get it out of the way because you're gonna screw up. But, like, sometimes you get, like, this false confidence, mm-hmm. and then you're just like, I'm better than that. And then when something happens, it'll really hurt them hard. But if you screw up early, screw up big. Go hard. Yeah. Make it big. Get it out of the way. That way you'll have a benchmark. Of like, well, at least it's not this. Yeah, like, and oh, then, I got that song. Well, and then, and then I, yeah, and then <laughs> I just over with. Yeah, and I just hope that, like, that wasn't the thing that stopped them from doing what they wanted to do. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, you know, I mean, because... There's a lot of people out there that have a lot of stuff in them. They want to get out, and they're too scared to get up there. And when they finally do, the worst thing that can happen is something bad happens. But at least, like, don't worry, the next one can't be as bad as the first mm-hmm. or the second or the third. So, I mean, have you ever had a moment where you're like, oh, my God, I can't believe this happened? Like, this, this, was, this wasn't supposed – it wasn't supposed to be like this. Oh, yeah, several. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> like that. Early on? Yeah. Yeah, early on, definitely, and, um, you know, I, you just learn, you learn from, from those moments, and you just kind of move, and, and you have to let go, let go. Let go. Let go. That's the ultimate thing for me right now, is just to let go, so if I have, you know, like, ooh, that was not supposed to go like that, that's, yeah. you know, you just have to let go, and just keep moving, like, you can't just, like, live in that moment over and over again because then you'll keep having that moment over and over again so you just let go and you just um keep rising above and just keep doing your thing and not get discouraged you yeah know? like the more you do it the better you're gonna get you know yeah if you just keep doing it just keep practicing keep at it you know things will you know you'll keep you'll keep getting better at it so just right let go and just not let that moment define every other moment I think that last part that's the key right yeah. there. Don't let that I define said going forward. To get to that. Yeah, <laughs> hey, no, it's it's a winding road. Who are you jamming to right now? What's uh, what's tickling your fancy? That's uh, come across your day, de- new or old. You know, I find myself like listening back mm. more so than um, listening forward. You know, um, and it's not that I don't like new material or anything like that. I think I'm just like. I read an article once that the older you get, the more you listen to the music you kind of grew up with. Yeah. You know, um, but I think there, there's there's some definitely some amazing bands. You know, like I listen to um, they're a band from Memphis and they're called Dirty Streets and I was oh, like, God, oh god, yeah, they're really good. It's like I don't think I heard of them. They've been around for a while. Where have I been? Yeah, yeah. You know? um, and so I was like listening to them like yesterday, just kind of like checking out their videos and stuff. Again, just kind of studying what they're doing. Yeah. You know, because I really like what they're doing. It's really cool. Um, but, yeah, a lot of the stuff that I listen to is just, like, more classic rock type stuff. I, my favorite band out of, in the whole world is Radiohead, so I, I have their always nice. rotation. Yeah. Um, I was listening to Reckoner the other day. 
Because yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, mean, I always listen to him, but uh, my girl is a real big fan of it, and she goes, uh, and she's like, she played that album, like, uh, what was it, uh, In Rainbows. In Rainbows, yeah. Yeah, that was the one they put out, and it was free. And beautiful. 15 Step goes out there, and because I, like, I always had a negative viewpoint on Radiohead, because there were, like, there were songs that went nowhere. Yeah. But then I was like, oh, they, 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 they kind of just oh, they, they kind of just start here and they end there. Yeah. But but like the journey is so beautiful that I'm like, oh my, of course. Like, once you get it, you yeah. get it, and you're like, and now I'm like, I can't get enough of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I saw one guy did a, a piano version of the uh, a piano version of there there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's like a French or German guy, and it was just it was kind of like this kind of chaotic. I forgot the name of the guy. It's a good story, but uh, it, it was really well done. But I'm, I digress. Radiohead. Yeah. 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 I think I went through a phase where they were kind of all I listened to for a really long time. So uh, I don't think I sound anything. <laughs> None of my music sounds like them. But what I do pull from them is the fact that they were just, they're always taking risks. Yeah. You know? And I want to remember that, you know, um, I don't want to spend my life trying to please people. I just want, we want to be authentically who we are as a band and just not be afraid to take whatever risks that, you know, we want to take and feel that are necessary to take. So. Well, if you try to please everybody, you won't please anybody. Exactly. Namely yourself. You know? And then you're, you're not being yourself and then, I don't know, like, you should be yourself. Yeah. You know, everyone should. I was like, well, I think my, what my mom say, she was like one of these fortune cookie wisdom things she gave me. She was like, there's plenty of other people with... There's, there's, there's plenty of other people, just not only one you. Yeah, something Some, like that. Something like that. I was like, oh, no, well, no, this is what she told me. She said, if everyone likes you, you're doing something wrong. And I, and I remember I was in the high school, I was in the high school parking lot when she told me it never left me. Yeah. And I was like, all right. Exactly. And if you're too busy being someone else, then, you know, who's the real you? You know, are we really getting to know the real you? Yeah. Take chances. Keep rocking it out. Exactly. Yeah. This week. So this weekend, Cooper Young Festival on on uh, Saturday. It's gonna be a hot one. Yeah, I, hope... I heard the heat index is gonna be like 104 or something. Yeah, you'll like be that. sweating your ass that. off on that one. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. It, under that's... a 10 or not. Right. Do they at least let you pull up to right there on Cooper or yeah, Young you right at behind least it? Pull up, you know. Okay. And uh, just so like have your air blasting real like cold and then pull out and then get on stage i guess and then you'd be cool for at least two minutes two you... yeah <laughs> i don't know um i don't know i feel like i was thinking yesterday maybe i can go into my attic and practice you know or the, oh get ready for it get ready for oh it. yeah <laughs> you could definitely go sweat somewhere. out the poison yeah it's like mm, but i don't think i want to do that but I, I think that um you know ultimately it'll be fine i think that we're just going to be so into what we're doing that we're just going to be unbothered by the heat because we're just going to be like your adrenaline's going to be running so hot and heavy yeah. it's going to be a blast yeah it's going to be exactly. such a good time we're just going to have fun i don't care how hot it's going to be yeah, we get some gonna, cheese sticks at the deli right you know, afterward oh, exactly yeah vegetarian not vegan not vegan all right not vegan. i was gonna say like, yeah get some cheese sticks yeah i eat way too much cheese so yeah <laughs> I love fat cheese. man's candy <laughs> <laughs> love cheese yeah love cheese we're just saying if if they if the universal health care went through, they're gonna start knocking things off. They're gonna have to. You can't have universal health care and then uh, like the Golden Corral. I don't know if they exist in the same world because all you can Probably eat buffets. Not. Yeah. So I think like gas station cheese pumps are the first thing to go. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That's terrible cheese. Though. It's so cheese, bad like... for you. <laughs> <laughs> that's like the worst I don't is that even really cheese it's orange first of all yeah it's, 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 <laughs> it's not even a, a food cheese. it's a color <laughs> <laughs> well because we left Tom Segura last night and once you see a stand up comic you just kind of leave them and every, the, the, the juice is just flowing like seeing uh, it's like seeing a band or something like that You're, I'm like I need to anytime I see a band and the first thing I have to do when I go home is pick up my instrument like that was a good concert Oh, yeah. That's a great concert. Like when you just want to practice. <laughs> All you want to so do, awesome. yeah. It's like, oh, man, it's the best. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. It was the last person that did that to you? Uh, you know, they're coming back to Memphis. And um, 
I think we're going to possibly open for them, but we're not for sure yet. But there's nice. this band called um, Black Pumas. Okay. And they are, I forget where they're from, but that band, I listened to them and just listened to him sing. And the way that he, I mean, just the whole band was just a really amazing band. So look up Black Black Pumas. Black Pumas. Um, and they're going to be uh, at Growlers like later this month and we may or may not open for them. We're still working out the details. Oh, right on. But um, that was that was the band that made me like, huh, I need to <laughs> learn how to sing better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need to pick up my guitar and like learn to solo better. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so yeah, that was that was the last band that did it for me, I think. Guys, it, it was funny. I saw Black Hippie recently and that oh, was... Oh, we love them so much. And that was the band I saw recently that was like, I got to sing better. Yeah, we've and we done a couple shows with them, and we I love, you know, I love Josh. Mm -hmm. I love we love that band. They are just amazing. Their bass player was getting it. Yeah, he had these like fun awkward moves, <laughs> and then he had like this explosion of energy where he just ran. Yeah, I haven't seen them with a new bass player yet. I met them, met him at our last one of our um, last gigs, and he was like, "Yeah, we." He's just new to the band, mm -hmm. and I haven't seen them yet. But um, he's getting the melody. Yeah, he plays I'm those bass really melodies excited. for sure. I'm excited. I just love them. So I love the scene that we're kind of we're kind of in right now. Yeah, these are good times for Memphis. I mean, you've got some good bands and just just really good vibes and um, you know, Black Hippie and I love Lipstick Stains. Lipstick and, Stains. You know, there's just so many really amazing musicians right now, and, and the bands are just real quality. So and you talk about being yourself. There's a lot of people not compromising and doing exactly what they want to do in this town. Exactly. And that's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, and I think it's going to shape a lot of sound. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, not just here, everywhere else. Because, I mean, the influence of Memphis is still alive and well. Mm -hmm. So. Definitely. We definitely, I mean, the influence is, is here. Mm -hmm. And, um. I don't like pat um, ourselves on the back like we're going to be like, we're kind of carrying the torch, but. I think there's a lot of cool stuff happening. There is a lot of cool stuff happening, you know, and I think it's okay to acknowledge that there's a lot of cool yeah. stuff happening because, you know, if you don't acknowledge it, then people won't know it. <laughs> so 100% true. We have to say it. You know, there's some really amazing bands out there, and we need to support our local musicians as much as possible so that, you know, the world will know about what's happening in Memphis. I hope, hopefully you don't mind me saying Mama Honey's one of those bands. Well, thank you. And it's thank a pleasure, you. it's a pleasure watching, seeing you, and listening to you. Uh, Mama Honey, Mama Honey Memphis, uh, at, uh, dot com, go see, uh, go listen to Punk Blues. That's right. Uh, the show this sa uh, Saturday at Cooper Young Festival, Sunday, Concert for Nonviolent Memphis. Yeah. Any other shows else coming up? Um, we have our website updated because <laughs> my memory is not that great. I know we have something coming up in September. And then, um, you know, we just have stuff come up all the time. So um, I'm not exactly sure what we're doing in October. Well, we, are, we have a show at Canvas, I think, in October or okay. somewhere. I don't know exactly where it is. <laughs> well, just tell us and keep <laughs> us in the loop. And we'll... we, we, I told Phil to update our website, and she did, so... There you go. Uh, so MamaHoneyMemphis.com has got everything that you possibly want to know about our band. Awesome. Tamar, I appreciate you uh, sitting down with us today. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. This was fun. Absolutely awesome. I'm glad it was. It is The Stump every Wednesday, 3 p.m.-ish, right here at 98.1 The Max. Next week, Joy Bomb coming in, and uh, we're going to have some fun with them a week after that. I have no idea, but we'll figure it out. Peace. Thank you.